Uh, welcome uh, to the interview uh, segment uh, in this week's sessions of Wisdom from World Religions. Uh, and this uh, week, it's my pleasure to have as our guest, uh, Professor Diana Obeid, uh, who is an instructor of Arabic and Middle Eastern Studies at Christopher Newport University in the United States. Professor Obeid is also founding co-director of the Middle East and North Africa Study Pro Studies Program at Christopher Newport. Uh, Professor Obeid uh, teaches a variety of courses in Arab studies and uh, the humanities. She's given numerous presentations at academic conferences and also teaches uh, in many other venues as well. Um, Professor Obeid's research interests include moder the modern Middle East, Arab prison literature, Win women and gender studies in the Arab world and translation studies. Uh, she is uh, uh, the author of a forthcoming book uh, called Nawal al -Sad Sadawi and Hanan al Shaikh's Authorship Between Arab and Western Reception. Welcome, Professor Obeid. Thank you. Thank you. Glad to be here. Thank you. Uh, well, um, one question as we start is, would you mind saying a little bit about your background and how that led you to your uh, academic research, uh, the interests in translation and uh, women and gender and other such issues? I am originally from uh, Lebanon. Uh, I came to the United States about 12 years ago. Uh, before that, I was teaching um, uh, uh, in Dubai. Um, for I taught there about eight years and then came to the United States, finished my grad school, and uh, started teaching at Christopher Newport University. Yes. Well, um, okay, well, the, the, the topic at the center of, of your book uh, is um, the topic of uh, women uh, Arab writers, the first women Arab writers, and you write in your book Quote, before the middle of the 19th century, there were no published writings by women in the Arab world, unquote. Uh, this may seem unusual to some of our hearers, and, and can, can you say something about that and also how that situation might be similar to what occurred in the West or different? Uh, Arab woman writing actually began in 1892, if we're going to talk about it, uh, when a, Lebani a Lebanese girl, uh, she's called Zainab Fawaz, uh, and uh, she was from a modest background uh, from a village in uh, the south of Lebanon. Uh, she was working uh, as a maid for uh, her employer, and her employer's wife uh, felt that she had the talent and the creativity, so she started teaching her. Mm -hmm. And then she traveled to uh, Egypt, and there she started writing letters, and then she started writing, actually, the first novel, the first play we know uh, in Arabic literature was written by her. She wrote a 552-page uh, autobiographical dictionary on women and achievements. And that's the first written record, but before that, even during the Jahiliya, which is the pre-Islamic times, we have women Arab poets. You know, Arab women wrote poems. Usually, they use they wrote them to express their emotions, their love uh, to to uh, to their uh, about their uh, family to a lover. So there there was lots of abundance of uh, poems, and uh, but the novel itself as uh, a form of writing started with uh, uh, with uh, Zainab in 1892 and then we have also another Lebanese author who wrote uh, uh, in, in the 1900s uh, started with the uh, another novel so it, it's clear then that it's clear then that uh, there are Arab writers uh, who, uh, and their themes aren't just about religion and they're also pre-Islamic writers as well. Um, yeah. What obstacles do, uh, did women writers and uh, these early women writers in, in the Arab uh, world face? Like all other women writers, also uh, they uh, they uh, have faced criticism from their male counterparts. Um, uh, women uh, faced obstacles because they were supposed to be housewives, uh, taking care of the children and as mothers. 
So they did not have the luxury of uh, what Virginia Woolf calls a room of one's own. With with uh, with, uh, she says that the woman, if she wants to write, she has to have like a salary and no children. And you know that's why the novel medium was very difficult for these Arab women writers. They they reverted to poetry, which can be written and recited quickly and orally among her peers. We we for example, when we talk about Zainab, the first uh, Arab woman writer to write a play, she also started the first literary saloon. And in, she was wearing the niqab, for example, and in those saloons she was not allowed to be exposed to uh, to men. So she would, her husband, uh, who was also an author, uh, would be meeting with the, and uh, leading the uh, discussion uh, for her. So she would talk to him and he would report and uh, report her questions to the audience because she was not allowed to be uh, seen since she, uh, and that is in the 1800s, as I said, in 1892. Yes, uh, uh, so uh, there are a lot of issues uh, that would be interesting to speak about here, Uh, but can you just say a little bit more about uh, the two uh, women writers that are at the heart of your book and perhaps some of the differences between them? Yes, uh, I'll talk about Hanan Sheikh, who is a famous Lebanese uh, author, Hanan uh, Sheikh, and uh, Nawal Saadawi. Nawal Saadawi is an Egyptian uh, feminist. Uh, she had uh, lots of uh, work on uh, Arab, uh, she was the first feminist and uh, on Arab women um, issues. And uh, it's interesting here in these two writers in particular, I looked at their uh, uh, Arab version, Arab books, uh, or uh, oh. books written in Arabic originally, and as they were translated into English. And uh, here it's very interesting to uh, look how these women have been constructed through translation, in particular ways uh, how Arab women's uh, Arab women's uh, oppression is highlighted, uh, Arab women's victimization, Arab women uh, um, as uh, as uh, victims or as passive victims, if you want to say, and. If we compare, for example, I'm going to give you an example. If we yes. compare Hanan Sheikh's book, which is in Arabic called The Woman, uh, the Mosque al Ghazal, uh, the Ghazal's Mosque, and in English it is translated as Women's of Sand and Mir. If we compare these two books, we would notice a discrepancy between the Arabic version and the English version. In the English, for example, the book talks about four uh, girls, uh, one from Lebanon, who had to live in uh, in the Gulf area. She did not disclose uh, that area, but it is assumed to be Saudi Arabia. Uh, so her travel with her husband there, coming from Lebanon, a woman used to wearing short skirts, going out on her own. Living in Saudi Arabia, she had faced some difficulties with the uh, constrictions there. So she wanted to leave, and at the end, uh, she left. Now, this is the first, the, the story, the novel, traces the story of these four women. Uh, Another one, uh, two other women are from the Gulf and American uh, lady. Mm -hmm. In Arabic version, we see, for example, the book starts with Soha and ends with the story of Tamer, who is a a girl from the Gulf, was married at a very, very young age, uh, but with her resilience and kind of, as Candioti calls it, the Turkish writer Candioti calls it, but patriarchal bargaining, uh, got to uh, get to her own shop, to uh, put her shop in her own name, to get the education. And so we we see in this sense there is uh, a sense of uh, resilience with this woman, conveys the uh, Tamer as a strong, determined, traditional Arab woman. Now, this is in the Arabic version, and the book in the Arabic version ends with the story of Tamar. So it ends on a positive note that 
women can play out with their traditional society and can become independent. However, if we look at the English version, mm-hmm. Tamil's story was buried in the middle of the book. And the book ends with the, uh, with, uh, the Suhal, the Lebanese uh, girl, fleeing the oppressive country, which is uh, the Gulf country, and going back to uh, Lebanon. So, if we notice here, uh, the change in the text participate in a discourse also that sees Arab women as victimized, Arab women as oppressed. And if we want to look at, there are also other changes that have made between the... This, This really raises a number of issues. First of all, one, the first thing that occurs to me is that it seems as if the translators weren't just translating, but they were almost recreating uh, the book. They seem to took a lot of liberties with it. The book it. lends itself to this creation because the book is not, uh, does not, uh, the characters are independent of each other, but there is a line that attaches them together. So they could move with the chapters in the book without disrupting the uh, story. However, it, yeah. it raises questions about the, the emphasis on the book. Yes, the emphasis. So, so, for, so I, I guess I'll, if I were translating a book, I might think my responsibility was just to translate it, if not literally, but at least not to change yeah. the, the whole structure of the book. But the question arises, and this is a theme that emerges in your writings, it seems as if Western understandings of women in the Arab and Muslim world is that they are very passive and under the control completely of men. And uh, whereas that doesn't seem to be the case, that it emerges in your writing that that's actually a Western misconception. It is a Western misconception, and we need to, we need here to stop and pause a little bit to stop looking at this, the Arab world as one monolithic region. It, the status of the Arab wom- uh, world v- varies from one country to the other. Uh, even in Lebanon, which is all Arab countries as we know are in the state, mo- uh, the, re- the main religion is Islam. However, in Lebanon, it is Christianity. If we look at Lebanon, Lebanese women legally also are, uh, don't have the rights uh, the some other Arab countries even have. So when we blame Islam for the um, oppression of women, which is which is kind of uh, the misconception also mm-hmm. uh, here, we are tarnishing the Arab world in one uh, yes. uh, monolithic view. Um, so the, the the idea of feminism is, as I, I imagine there are some who see that a feminist concern in an Arab woman writer is is merely an example of Western influence or colonialism or Orientalism. Do you think that's the case, or that's that's the blame? That is why also uh, the double-edged sword that some mm-hmm. Arab woman writers face, for because uh, every time they write something, they are bla- they are considered as Western conspirators, right? Yes. They are. Uh, they uh, uh, the writing is uh, blamed on Western influence. Mm-hmm. However, women have been seeking their rights forever in the Arab world, mm-hmm. and uh, oh yes, they have learned from Western theorists, and that that has uh, uh, lent it good. To, uh, that has. Uh, uh, positive effects on their also fight for their feminism. However, they bl- uh, transnational feminists had um, issues with Western feminist universalism. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, they had uh, an issue of uh, turn uh, of Western feminist view of women as all the same, uh, as uh, trying to. Um, uh, change the Arab woman from without, without realizing that the Arab, the Arab, the change should have, should take place from within, from the within the Arab world. Um, It's very difficult for us to understand and the West to understand how can women who are oppressed um, be speaking about these issues. Mm -hmm. Yes. uh, without being as explicit as we want them to be. However, if we look at, Nawa, at Hanan Sheikh's book, for example, um, 
Hanan Sheikh's book talks about Tamar, who is a girl in the uh, Saudi Arabia, who is from a conservative country. However, in the end of the story, she made something out of herself. She became independent, not as independent as we understand it in the West, but uh, as um, a traditional society mm-hmm. could understand it. She made uh, something yes. of her own. Uh, it seems it seems that uh, a theme that really emerged when I was reading uh, your your chapter is that it does seem that the concerns of of, of, of Arab and Muslim feminists really get distorted when translated into Western languages, and that so they 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 serve a different function in the global Western audience than they serve in the Muslim Arab world. We have a certain, and I don't think this will evade soon. We have a certain. Um, tendency to focus on the hijab, the polygamy, the uh, Mm -hmm. genital cutting, uh, and other practices that are deemed uh, oppressive in our Western imagination, shows that these these signs are not going to abate anytime soon. But we have responsibility as uh, readers of Arabic literature to challenge and rethink presentations of Arab women and continually um, look at them as not only uh, uh, victimized, but look at what these women themselves are trying to do to overcome uh, their victimization. Uh, As I said, it's very interesting to look let us say, for example, Nawal Saadawi's book. Yes. Nawal Saadawi's book uh, in Arab, uh, in the Arabic version, is called Al Wajh Al Ari Lil Mar Al Arabiya, which which translates as the naked face of the Arab woman. However, the title, when it was translated, is called the ha- hidden face of Eve. Wow. So uh, even even if we look at the introduction in her book, the introduction uh, talked about the uh, Iranian Revolution. She hailed the Iranian Revolution as uh, the um, as a revolution that is going to free. You know, the she she looked at it as 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 uh, something positive. Um, uh, also, uh, she had a chapter in the book on genital mutilation, but the chapter was buried inside the Arabic version. However, it became very it became the focus in the yes. uh, in the English uh, translation. So we see that in these uh, uh, the the books usually confirm rather than unsettle the reader's assumptions on Arab woman and its and her status. In that I see. So is this perhaps then the reason why uh, some um, um, Arab uh, critics, uh, literary critics, see that often that the West and the globe global uh, readership celebrates women Arabic Arab write authors who are not as celebrated in the Arab world. That, that yes. yes. And that's why Nawal Saadawi, who is by the Arab critics, uh, some people really criticize her literary achievements, mm-hmm. although we have to uh, 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 hail her uh, her role as a feminist, as mm-hmm. uh, as an outspoken woman on women, Arab women's rights uh, and their advancement of education, uh, as a, the literary uh, value of her books has been questioned by uh, Arab uh, critics. Um, However, here we have to admit that Arab women writers also, we we have to fault Arab critics for either these writings were ignored by Arab critics or were not discussed critically as worthy of... uh, So, uh, as Nawal Saadawi herself say, any kind of criticism is better than being ignored totally. That's clearly the case. Um, so that that then is a nice way to uh, uh, change t- topics to uh, to your your experience and your writing and your research on pr- Arab prison literature. Can can you say something about that? That and uh, it's a very compelling topic. Yes, it is very compelling, and um, it's very interesting. We have abundance of Arab uh, prison literature, Arab literature coming from prison, and here we have to define. uh, differentiate between um, political prison literature and civil 
uh, present mm -hmm. literature. Uh, you know, after the 19th, in the 19th century, many uh, authoritarian regimes took hold of the Arab world. Most of those leaders were from military background. They were not capable of handling opposition. So, uh, Whenever anybody or anything could be, uh, or anyone uh, uh, resisted or criticized these regimes, they ended up in uh, jails or prisons. It's okay. worth also talking about, like, when I talk about the Tadmor prison in Syria, mm -hmm. these prisons were built by European powers. The French built uh, Tadmor uh, prison, and then the Assad regime, the father and the son, used this to imprison uh, and torture uh, its, its uh, citizens. Um, Arab writers, women and men, uh, were, did not have the access to writing. So most of them did not have the access of paper and pen, but they had inventive ways of uh, uh, writing about their experience. Some of them uh, wrote on um, cigarette papers, uh, like Sina Allah Ibrahim in Egypt. Others, uh, like Nawal Saada, we wrote on, to on toilet papers. Others, uh, like uh, the... Um, Prisoners in uh, Tasma Mart in Morocco, uh, which 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 in the 1990s was closed uh, due to uh, to the world in, uh, intervention, uh, did not have even the access to these. Uh, toilet paper or cigarettes. So what they did is that they would, would memorize the lines mm -hmm. of stories and uh, and when they get out of prison, they either wrote themselves wrote them themselves or uh, reported those stories to someone who put them in writing, like Tahar bin Jalun uh, did. Uh, yeah. It's very... In yes. Yes, and so I, I can see that there are a lot of resonances with uh, world pr world prison literature uh, in other totalitarian or, or dictatorial regimes. In particular, the camp literature that's coming from uh, uh, Russia, from uh, Soviet Union at that time. Was it Solzhenitsyn and Samizdat literature and that that uh, those connections? Yes. Um, well, you know, as uh, when another area where you, you're very active uh, at, at Christopher Newport University is introducing uh, young people in the United States to Middle Eastern culture, Arabic culture, and the Arabic language. Can you say, speak about your experience along those lines? Yes, this is very interesting to me. The, um I started teaching Arabic at Christopher New you know, Newport University a while ago, and uh, Arabic is a beautiful language. Uh, it's it's poetic. It is. Mm -hmm. I wanted the students to see beyond the politics, to see yes. the beautiful and uh, the beauty of the language. And our students, Christopher New. Newport have been very receptive of uh, learning the language. Mm -hmm. uh, we we started with a small number of classes, and our classes are growing tremendously. Uh, that's all due to the interest in the uh, uh, in the Arabic region and in the Arab world, and uh, not only political but creatively too. Uh, these students have res such respect to the culture and mm -hmm. such interest and curiosity to learn more about it. And uh, they have embraced the language and the culture in a very uh, beautiful uh, way, which makes my life easy. And yes. uh, <laughs> so, so you say that... Uh... Uh, some of the students, they're not all just interested in Arabic for political reasons. They're, they're also interested in culture, religion as well? They might have started in, in their interest in Arabic because they're political science students mm -hmm. or because they have ambition and uh, in pursuing it uh, uh, as a political means to, uh, to improve their uh, resume yes. future and all that stuff. However, their interest does not stop there. They oh, yeah. fell in love with the language. It's it's not an easy language to learn. Mm -hmm. However, they have embraced it whole, wholeheartedly. And now we're looking at a 300 level courses in Arabic because, I mean, students are demanding to know more and learn more about it. So even if this was their objective, 
-hmm. but they fell in love with the culture, the knowing more about uh, women and uh, and men and uh, food and and uh, everything about the Middle Eastern and Arab culture. Well, well, it, well, Professor Obeid, uh, uh, that uh, sounds like excellent work introducing young people to the glories of of a, of a world culture.